Today's video checks so many boxes near and dear to my heart. Uh, Epstein, libel law abuse, powerful men doing stupid shit that we can all laugh at. Let's dive right in. Lawrence Lessig is a Harvard Law professor who's perhaps best known for founding Creative Commons, the absolutely good and necessary organization that allows for the easy legal sharing of a variety of creative work. It's great because, for instance, a person can take a photo and make it available to be shared with attribution, so you don't need to pay to use it. Uh, in your blog or your video, so long as you credit the photographer. It allows for work to be adapted, shared, and used easily in plain language without the need for a law degree to understand it. Creative Commons is an undeniably good thing, but Lessig is doing his best to make it clear that he is so much more than just a good guy who made a good thing. He's also a gigantic asshole. Allegedly. Please don't sue me, Lawrence Lessig. I don't have any money. You see, Lessig is friends with Joey Ito, a man who up until recently ran MIT's Media Lab. It, Ito came under fire after investigations revealed that he took hundreds of thousands of dollars, at least, from the billionaire pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. You might remember Epstein from the many times I've talked about his cozy relationship with scientists like Lawrence Krauss. Or maybe you remember him from that time he uh, fucking finally got national attention by being arrested in New York. Or from that time that he absolutely did not kill himself. Anyway, Epstein donated large amounts of money to the Media Lab, uh, as well as arranging for other philanthropists to do so, like Bill Gates. Oh, did you not realize that Bill Gates was also caught up in all of this? That's probably because he's a billionaire and billionaires tend to escape scrutiny until superhuman efforts efforts are made on the part of investigators and victims to expose them, at which point they're cornered and someone comes along and helps them commit suicide to protect the other billionaires. The circle of life. Once all this came to light, Ito resigned from the Media Lab. The New Yorker reported that he had gone out of his way to make sure that Epstein's donations were anonymous and as untraceable as possible, because by this point, Epstein was a convicted child rapist, and Ito knew that that could be bad for business. It was big news when he resigned, and so Lawrence Lessig sat down at his computer and wondered, how can I make this about myself? So he wrote a blog post on Medium that admitted that he knew Epstein donated to Media Lab and that he had told Ito that accepting the money was the right thing to do. He said that Ito claimed Epstein was reformed, not a pedophile anymore, that after getting a sweetheart deal that was mostly ignored by everyone uh, when he was initially prosecuted for running a child sex ring, Epstein was so scared. He was like, that's it. I'm giving up pedophilia for good this time. So Lessig was like, oh, well, in that case, yes, you should take his money, but make sure you do it anonymously. Brilliant. Uh, Ito agreed, covered up the donations, and now here we are. In his post, Lessig went over four types of philanthropist. Type one is a person whose wealth comes from doing good things, like Taylor Swift, which is a weird example, but okay. I guess it's hard to come up with someone who has amassed more money than most humans will see in a 100 lifetimes who earned it by not fucking over other people. So, okay, Taylor Swift, type one. Type two is a person whose wealth comes from a large corporation like Google, which could be seen as good or evil, depending on your perspective. Type three is a person who is evil, but whose wealth does not come from doing evil things. Lessig throws Epstein in there. And type four is a person who is evil and whose wealth comes from doing evil things, like an old-timey mob boss stereotype. Lessig argues that the only negative reason to take the money of types three and four is if they are making the donation to cleanse their reputation. So it stands to reason that it is morally ambiguous to just take that money anonymously. Look, you might be thinking, no, it's not. It is 100% immoral to accept vast sums of money from pedophile rapists, because even if it's anonymous, that person will uh, still benefit from the connections they're forming and the fact that you will now feel beholden to them uh, when, say, they claim to be reformed. So you defend them as reformed when they are obviously not reformed and anyone with half a brain can see that. And you would have a very good point. 
for saying those things. But before you can even make that point, allow me to highlight this fact. How did Jeffrey Epstein become a billionaire? What objectively good things did he do to earn that money that put him into the type three instead of the type four categorization? Did all that money he earned come from his only verifiable job, which, uh, let's see, was, oh yeah, primary school teacher? Because first of all, you know that primary school teacher is the fast track to being an ethically made billionaire. And also, you know that there's no way Epstein's pedophilia led him to that career. No, he probably just did it because it was so ethical to teach little girls and then become a billionaire. Anyway, Lessig doesn't discuss any of that. He just takes it on faith that Jeffrey Epstein, who ran a worldwide child sex trafficking ring, made billions of dollars the moral way, somehow, secretly, as an investor with no history of successful investments and with no data on where the initial money came from with which he invested. Cool. Super moral. And so assuming that, Lessig argues that if universities are going to accept blood money from type four or the money from people convicted of a crime, type three, they should only ever accept the money anonymously. He goes on to say that were it up to him, he would ban anything except for anonymous donations from type three or type four people. He says this repeatedly and very plainly in his post. If you are going to take type three money, then you should only take it anonymously. He says that Ito covering up the fact that the donor was Epstein was actually a virtue. It was a good thing. It was moral. He also mentions that it was a mistake to accept the money because, you know, people eventually found out and it caused this big to do. Anyway, the New York Times reported on his post with the headline, a Harvard professor doubles down. If you take Epstein's money, do it in secret. This is without a doubt a very accurate headline. <laughs> It is nearly word for word what Lessig himself wrote and bolded in his own essay. If you are going to take type three money, then you should take it anonymously. That is basically the exact same same sentence. I do not see a difference between these two pictures. Lessig did see a difference though, and he's suing the New York Times for what he has called clickbait defamation. And friends, it's kind of adorable how enamored Lessig is with this term. He bought the URL, he made a video about it. It's a hashtag, it's so catchy. He came up with this phrase and was immediately like, holy shit, forget Creative Commons. This is the one that goes on my gravestone. Clickbait defamation. He claims in his lawsuit that the New York Times defamed him by writing that extremely accurate headline using nearly his own words, and then only including the context in the article itself. That is not clickbait uh, at all. That's just what headlines are and what they have been since headlines were invented. You take the most interesting part of the story and you distill it down to say 15 words or less. And that's the headline. You can't fit much more in there. So then you spell everything out clearly in the article. And I really can't emphasize this enough. The New York Times headline was almost exactly what he wrote himself. And nowhere in the video or in the entire website Lessig made does he describe how it was not accurate? His argument seems to be that his 3,500 word medium post had more context than their 14 word headline. That's not defamation. That's just what happens. And not just in my non-lawyer opinion, it's also the common opinion of actual lawyers, including those who, like me, aren't fans of clickbait. The problem here is that defamation lawsuits tend to find the exact opposite of what Lessig is hoping for. The judges look at the total context of what was being said, what the person meant when they said it, and what are the other words surrounding the words that the person is arguing is defamatory. Lessig wants the headline to be taken completely out of context as though there wasn't an entire article accompanying it. And again, even if it was just the headline without an article, it's literally what he said. That was the meaning of his own words. I really just can't stress this enough. In my opinion, don't sue me. I could definitely see an instance in which clickbait defamation is actually a thing that happens. If the New York Times wrote that same article, but with a headline reading, 
Harvard professor loves billionaire pedophile and thinks MIT rightly took his money. Boom, that could be defamation because that's a purposeful misreading of Lessig's essay. But this isn't. And it's embarrassing that Lessig is doubling down on all of this and using libel bullying to try to silence people who are accurately disseminating his own bad ideas. He's not just suing the New York Times. He's included the author of the article as well as her editor and the editor of the paper himself. Because the New York Times is a fairly stable institution. I trust that they're going to fight this, but there's always the possibility that they'll cut their losses and fire the journalist. And that's fucking scary. Hell, it's scary just to have someone name you in a lawsuit, regardless of whether or not your employer is going to help you fight it. Lessig should be embarrassed. And I hope that this clickbait defamation bullshit turns into the Streisand effect for him. Uh, I hope that now everyone will know what a stupid wrong opinion he had about the whole Jeffrey Epstein Media Lab fiasco. And I hope that this is now what he's going to be known for for the rest of his miserable life.